You're doing this for Lucy. You take his superior complex crap and deal with it. Keep this job and get that year-end bonus. Only ten more months to go. Head held high, she walked through the crowded front lobby. Mr. Newland? Mr. Newland? Mr. Newland? Mr. Newland? A throng of reporters called out his name as she neared the massive entrance doors. Do you have a moment? Do you have a moment? Have a moment? Roxy turned as the mob rushed to the sidewalk, flanking him as he strode for the building. He met her gaze and pointed to the doors. She proceeded inside, and he followed a moment later, still silent and giving the press nothing. He huffed out a breath as she seemed to relax in the relative peace of the lobby, the cameraman and reporters still yelling from outside. He gestured for her to pass through security. Is she here yet? Tara? She shrugged. I've just arrived myself. Cherie and Marcus met with Ben this morning. They're probably inside already. He emptied his pockets at the scanner. Where's... He pointed a finger at her chest. Where's your child? Roxy set her jaw and stepped through the detector. Lucy is with Sophia. A nanny? More like an aunt. Where's her father? Sophia's? Roxy handed him his briefcase as he came through the detector. I think he passed away about sixty years ago. He glared at her as they proceeded toward the courtroom. Lucy's. She doesn't stay with her father? She doesn't have one. Don't tell me. Divine conception? Roxy tossed him a barbed look. They paused to the door which led to the courtroom. When she moved to enter, he held her back. Okay, ignorance was my best option. He really has to hash this out now? Her father was a one-night stand. He never chose to acknowledge her. It wasn't a complete lie. Jimmy had no trouble acknowledging Lucy's existence when he used her for blackmail, but otherwise, he pretended she didn't exist. A half hour later, I'd managed something that might have resembled the stretching tattoo that wrapped from his pecs to that V leading to something even more tempting. Damn it! I managed to murmur that time. It wasn't just that he was remarkably gorgeous. Now what's wrong? Carly Whisper yelled. He's... Come on, Lex. I'm trying, really, but he's been watching me. Carly glanced up. Huh? No, he's not. He's staring at the wall. I think that's what they're supposed to do. Look into the distance. Then we've got a rebel on our hands. I swear, every time I look at him, I feel him watching me. Carly deadpanned. Can you please not mock this or me? Drawing might be a joke to you, but seriously, I'm not. Once the initial shockwave of hormonal awareness and general visual appreciation of that fine man passed some, I still couldn't fight the blush searing my skin. Something about him set me off, not just the nudity. Each time I dared to objectively study him, the weight of his attention made my control skip away. He's watching me, and it makes me feel all exposed. Odd given that my face and ass were being virally spread through the cyber world, I already was as exposed as I could get. I thought. Carly slapped her pencil to the easel base. Making you exposed? He's the one who's naked. It's the princess's birthday this week. You must bake an excellent cake and present it to her highness at the castle in time for her royal birthday party, the guardsman told Bobby. Bobby was so surprised by the news, she could barely speak. But she managed to say, Yes, thank you. I would be honored to bake the princess a cake. One afternoon, Bobby was having tea with her neighbor and friend, Rosie. They were catching up on the gossip from the fairy village and tucking into a batch of freshly made Chelsea buns that Bobby baked earlier when there was a knock at the door. I wonder who that could be, Bobby said to her neighbor Rosie. I bet it's someone else popping around for tea and cake. I better let them in. Bobby opened the door and saw it wasn't a neighbor at all. It was one of the royal guardsmen. 
I am here on behalf of the princess. When my best friend died of cancer just before her 18th birthday, she left her coveted bucket list to me. The things she already crossed off? Skinny dipping, going to Paris, completing the local hot wing challenge, road tripping to the ocean, and sending out a message in a bottle. So it falls to me to finish it for her, to honor her memory. In the next year, it's my mission to 1. Dye my hair 2. Have sex 3. Camp out in a tent 4. Go bungee jumping 5. Get revenge on Lincoln Kolb Most are doable, some terrify me. And then there is this last item on the list. When the raven-haired football god dumped my best friend during senior year of high school, she was devastated. The jerk with charm for days found out she was sick and betrayed her in the worst way possible. But he doesn't know me. I went to school a town over. Now, to fulfill my promise, I'm the newest freshman on the campus where he is the big man. If there is one thing, aside from cheap beer, that a jock can't pass up, it's a shiny new girl. So when I catch his eye, play hard to get, and then fall into his bed, I know my scheme is working to perfection. But what Lincoln can't see coming is the beatdown I have planned for his ice-cold heart. Unfortunately, what I never saw coming was the one he had planned for mine. Chapter 1. Refreshers Refreshing Cold Drinks Strawberry Akai Refresher Ingredients 2 cups sugar 1 tablespoon acai powder 3 cups water, cold Half cup sliced strawberries Freeze-dried or fresh Half apple juice 1 cup ice Instructions To make the syrup base 1. Pour 2 cups of water with all the sugar into a pot and bring to a boil. 